Hi, I'm Pam, and I would like to welcome you to the Live Authentically Show. My team and I help other people step into their authentic realities via a number of different modalities. This show is obviously one of them. We also have a Facebook group, and we can be found at liveauthentically.today slash FB. We're a group of like-minded people committed to spiritual growth and transformation, and we would absolutely love to have you join our group. I'm also super pumped that I just launched my first book. It's called SOAR, S-O-A-R, and it's on Amazon, and it's a spiritual experiential journey and shows how I partnered with the universe to create my reality. So I am super pumped that on today's show with me, I have Georgian Benta. Hi, Georgian. Hello. It's very nice to be here. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here. I'm super excited to have you here, and we've got a really rich discussion around gratitude. Georgian is going to tell us all about that today and how we can get in the mindset of gratitude. But first, I'm actually going to start off with two questions. Um, I kind of want to add sort of a geographic element to the podcast, because I think it's so amazing how technology can just unite us with people from literally across the world. And I know it's morning here for me, it's evening for you. So I'd love to have you start off by telling us where in the world you are joining us from. Yeah, I'm in Cluj, Napoca, Romania, which is in Eastern Europe. And uh, here it's, like you said, it's, it's in the evening right now. Wow. So what is your favorite thing about the place that you live? Hmm, that's such a beautiful beautiful question well uh the country itself is is really beautiful like we have uh, access to the seaside we have mountains we have all kinds of um beautiful uh parts of nature mm -hmm. and um yeah particularly here where i where i am right now i uh, i have a beautiful view of uh nature as well so for me as you can see nature is quite important and uh, it's something that um, yeah in my experience and in uh, the experience of the, the people that I've interviewed on the podcast uh, is a, a great way of connecting with gratitude yeah that's amazing thank you thank you for sharing that in what languages language or languages do you do your podcast uh, English so okay. I have guests from all over the world and uh, that's that's the beauty of it that um, yeah. Uh, even though English is in my my first language, I am able to talk with people from all around the world um, about gratitude and uh, learn from them, learn from different cultures. Um, and thanks to the this beautiful language, I can talk with people that aren't just from the US or from Australia or from uh, the UK, but I can talk with people from Japan or other parts of the world. That um, that know English and we are able to share um, the, the different cultures, the different ways we experience gratitude, uh, and I think it's it's something wonderful. And one, one beautiful thing about where where I live is the fact that we have a great internet connection. So I am uh, using the the positives in my life to to the best and uh, to the best of their abilities let's say and i'm able to uh, share what i'm doing with the world so it's it's really nice yeah such a gift thank you thank you again for being here and the next my question I, always, um, I would love to ask you i always start my shows with this question and i'd love to hear you answer the question what does it mean to you to live authentically every day mm, i love this question and it's one of the things that uh, that I talk about on the podcast. Like th the first thing that uh, that I that I said when I started the podcast is, uh, "Hello, I'm Georgian, and I'm not a grateful person." And I think um, living authentically means exactly this. Like uh, I'm not the perfect person. I am exploring this topic of gratitude. Attitude. I'm, at, I'm getting better and better at it mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that I don't have my down days and uh, I don't have uh, challenges in life so uh, for me living authentically is actually um, accepting the fact that life has ups and downs 
even if we uh, know many things and we are able to um, handle things better uh, as time goes on and as we learn new new skills to do that, we're still human and, and the fact that we can accept this is uh, what brings us actually uh, a lot of strength. I love that. Thank you for sharing. It's such a beautiful answer. <clears throat> I'm curious, so where, how did you come to this place of wanting to share your message of gratitude with the world? Can you tell me a little bit about the, your life events that led you up to this place? Yeah, so uh, like like many other stories, it's, it started with, uh, uh, with something bad happening. Um, I, I've been working on a business for, for a while and um, just things fell apart mm -hmm. and um, I was pretty sad and other things have happened, uh, have been happening in my life at that, at that moment. And um, I was actually praying and uh, looking for an answer to all of the things that uh, have been happening. And my the answer that i that i received were, was um a feeling was a sensation in my body wow and um that was for me uh like it felt like everything was new like mm -hmm. um i was by the river and um i i came back home because i went for for a walk and everything that i had uh, and that I was experiencing in that moment was like new. And I appreciated the city where I lived. Like I appreciated it the first time that I moved there. Mm -hmm. I appreciated the the flat where I lived like the first time when I moved there. Mm -hmm. The pet that I, that I had. Uh, I, I had so much more depth of appreciation for the things that I had and even though nothing changed on the outside uh, I I was uh, I was happy I was a completely different person I was able to uh, enjoy uh, an amazing experience of appreciating th those things and they were so vibrant and so uh, so alive for me so that was for me uh, an important answer and i realized afterwards that it was actually gratitude that i've experienced on a really profound level and i wanted to experience that more and more because i loved the feeling and it was it was very interesting for me that on the exterior nothing has changed and still i was so happy and i was thrilled about all of those simple things that I was um, enjoying in my life. So that got me started to um, actually learn more and explore this topic more and and actually um, talk with other people that have had similar experiences or that are able to live with gratitude um, most of their time. Mm -hmm. So where do you think that feeling came from? You know, that moment you described that feeling and when you felt that sensation kind of coursing through your body. What do you think that was? Where did that come from? Uh, well, for me, it was, uh, it was a spiritual experience. Like it was something that um, uh, it was like an answer to my prayers. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I can't, say that it was uh, from something specific um, but it was it was a great answer for me because it was a, a beautiful balance between a spiritual experience something that you can't actually put into words like it just came to me somehow um, and something very concrete like the experiences that I was having it it was linked to something real something very material let's say so um yeah it it was for me a, a, a spiritual experience and um it was the beginning of uh, me wanting to to understand it better and um yeah explore it more do you believe it was bestowed upon you from a higher power <laughs> well um that's very possible. Like I believe in God, I believe in uh, a higher power, and I believe in the fact that 
um, there is a creator of, of this uh, beautiful universe. So um, most definitely uh, it's, it's something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just something that wasn't under my control. So uh, to, to move back a little bit, I, uh, I was the kind of person that, that wanted to, to control things and to uh, like, I, uh, I felt that I could um, make things happen myself. So I didn't need actually something from the outside to help me uh, to reach my goals and do the things that I, that I wanted. And that experience was very interesting for me because it was something that came, just came to me from, uh, from somewhere. Mm-hmm. And um, it just uh, shifted my perspective. And I'm curious too, as I hear you talk about this, I'm curious about your belief system. And, and I know you said you believe in God, a higher power, creator of the universe, but what do you think it was within your belief system that allowed you to have this experience? Because in order for you to be open to it, in order for you to receive it, there has to be something deep within your belief system that invited it in. So what do you think that was for you? Hmm, that's a very good question. Um, I guess I I was open to other ways of seeing life uh, in that moment, and I think that's that's one of the things that happen when we are in a time of crisis. Somehow we are more more open to uh, to the things that we don't understand, like to another way of. Uh, being another way of experiencing life Mm -hmm. and um yeah i think in in those moments it it was something uh around this uh this idea yeah i love that that open-mindedness right that open-mindedness that says you know there there maybe there is a different way to see the world right maybe there is a different way to navigate life and i know that can be really daunting right that can be super overwhelming because the spirituality, this, this world of spirituality is, it's a whole different way of life. It's a lifestyle. It's a different language. Um, it's, it's learning to live a different way. So what words of advice do you have for someone who, who's thinking, you know what, I want to, I want to try to explore my spiritual side. I want to open up to different belief systems, different ways of living. How do I get started? Hmm. Well, um, I think just just being open is is very important, but it's not that as easy as it sounds. Like I've been to all kinds of uh, self development um, events and uh, spiritual events, and so I'm I'm pretty open to these things in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that uh, in most of them, I was um, I think. But many of them, I was the only guy. Okay. And uh, I think for women, it this comes easier. Like the fact that um, uh, women are more open to their intuitive side and to what they feel. For men, I think it's it's harder uh, from this point of view because we we tend to to focus on the things that we do, on the uh, the fact that we. Um, we are solution oriented and we we need to take care of the things that are more material more worldly and um yeah so from from this point of view i i think um it's uh, it for us men it is important to be uh, more open i think for for women it's easier and yeah, that's it's harder than it might sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. But that is such a critical component of spirituality is balancing that masculine and feminine energy. And I think you're right. I think, um, you know, for women, sometimes spirituality does come a little bit easier because of, you know, the feminine energy is more intuitive. It's more creative. All of that, the masculine energy has to do with providing and producing and goal oriented, you know, goal orientation and results-based things, et cetera. But 
really, I mean, the ideal state is to have well-balanced masculine and feminine energy within one soul, within one person. So I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about that, about what one can do, you know, what, um, you know, what people in living in the feminine energy can do to sort of rebalance to the masculine and also particularly, you know, when people are living in the masculine space, how they can lean more towards their feminine side and embrace spirituality. Yeah, well, uh, I can talk from my own experience. Um, I've been in in different extremes. Like um, w- when I was younger, I was very into sports and uh, things of this nature. I was always uh, hanging out with the guys only. Mm-hmm. And in time, I was uh, more and more open to self-development and to uh, spirituality and in those environments um there were uh, more women so i think it's a matter of balancing things out like um if we realize that we are too much in one extreme it's it's very important for us to to find a a balance like uh, i don't know if for me, at, at one point, I was asking myself, <laughs> what am I doing since I'm uh, always going to, to events and I'm interesting in thing, interested in things that um, interest women more than, than men? And uh, for a while, I wanted to balance, them, uh, balance that out and get back to sports and to, to things that, uh, for me, were uh, getting me into a more masculine energy and... Uh, hanging out with um, with guys more because I felt that need. So um, yeah, it's it's a matter of us being aware of where we are at a certain moment and just um, finding a balance. I, I think it's uh, we we get better at it as long as we give ourselves the the opportunity to explore, like to. Mm-hmm to go for things that are um, on either side of the, the coin and um, see what feels good in the moment and uh, what feels like um, balance for us. Because I think it's this, this is the, the best way to, to go about it, like to, to find that balance. I think both, both uh, worlds are, are very important and we can't have one without the other and be fulfilled yeah i think that's so important and i'd like to echo what you said use the word explore exploration and it really is a process of self-exploration self-discovery right we we never go from point a to point b linearly right it's a process it's a process of trying different things on whether we're talking about balancing masculine and feminine energy whether we're exploring a different eating regimen whether or not we're you know, incorporating different lifestyle modalities into our regimen. It's always a process, right? It's always a process of trying on and seeing what works for us. And that, that is the joy, right? That is the journey, right? It's, that's where the fun is. And I think sometimes so many people are, um, and I'm guilty as charged, you know, on this in the past, because I used to be so destination focused and goal oriented. And now I've come to learn that life is just so much sweeter if we just live in the moment and enjoy the experience that's right in front of us and not be so preoccupied with where we're going to, you know, where we're going, right? When am I going to get to that place of perfectly balanced masculine, feminine energy, like remove all of that and just enjoy where you are, try different things on and just see what works for you, see what feels right. So I'd love to hear you talk about, because I think that's so key, you know, anchoring on how we feel, right? How we feel in the moment and using that as a barometer for you know, for how we're doing, right? Whether or not something works for us. So can you talk a little bit about that? Just how important it is to anchor on your feelings? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm a big believer in in the power of the present moment and uh, that links beautifully to to gratitude as well. Like the fact that we... um, we can feel grateful right now even though other things might be happening in our life and um, this is one of the the beautiful things that um, 
gratitude helps us with actually anchoring ourselves in in the uh, present moment um mm -hmm. we we usually feel anxious or um worried or i don't know bad in uh, different ways when we are either in the future or in the past mm -hmm. when we are right here right now and we just take a deep breath like this we're just here and now and um it's much easier for us to um be aware of how we feel and to choose what we actually want to experience otherwise we we just go with the uh, the flow of thoughts that we have and we we go through different uh present moments in which we are we aren't actually present like just mm -hmm. life um goes uh, by by our side somehow it it, it leaves us it, we don't we don't leave it somehow it's uh it's a very interesting thing that happens yeah for sure and you use the word choose and i love that you use that word because you know life is a series of choices right it's a series of of big choices right choices that drive our milestones but it's always it's also um the way our life plays out is a reflection of choices that we make on a monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, you know, by the minute and ultimately a moment to moment basis. And that comes right down, that comes down to the thoughts that we think every single moment of the day. So I'd love to hear you talk about that too, about how we have the power to choose different thoughts. Because like you said, you know, it's, it's so easy to go down that rabbit hole of negativity, right? Especially with what's going on in the world. We're challenged across the board, you know, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, relationally, financially, you know, you, you name it, pretty much every category is challenged right now. So how can one start to embrace and embody and entertain more positive thoughts, particularly in a landscape of negativity like we're living in right now? Yeah, so as you might sus sus suspect, uh, I'm going to talk about gratitude when it comes to this because um, from what I've seen in, in my explorations is that basically when we get to a, a very bad state like uh, depression or um, anxiety, we tend to stack the negatives. Basically, we might have a negative experience or we have some negative news and we stack that, uh, that one upon the other and we get to feel worse and worse. Okay. And um, the beauty of gratitude is that it does the, the opposite of that. We are stacking one positive on top of the other and we are creating something very powerful and very um very special for for us the fact that we are able to to see the resources the things that are okay in our life the things that we can use to um to manage the the issues that um arise in our life that's that's very important especially in these times like if we focus on the news, on different things that um, that are happening, and we uh, we we stack them, and we um, just feel that I don't know, life has no meaning or purpose, or uh, some 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 things of this nature that we can go uh, into when we when we think about uh, this situation. Um, we can choose to do the opposite and just see the the beautiful things that we enjoy in our life. And uh, the the interesting thing about how our brain works is that it actually gets used with the beautiful things in our life. Like the the fact that we live where we live was once a dream, mm -hmm. and now we're experiencing it 
But the fact that we got used to it makes us not um, see it anymore. It, it's called the hedonic effect. We just, uh, it's just there. And it's the same with the people in our life. It, they are there, so we don't always see them and we don't always appreciate them. Um, but the beautiful part is that we can um, choose to appreciate those things even if we got used to them and to, to go deeper on, with that appreciation is exactly like um, the experience that I that I talked about in the beginning like nothing changed on the outside but I was able to appreciate everything more vibrantly and more uh, deeply than before and that was a, an amazing gift that I've been given with that Right. And uh, I believe that we can all do this. And I'm I'm sure that we can all do this. Just uh, look around and appreciate the things that we have around us and the people that we have around us and uh, go deep. And um, the fact that, for instance, uh, a few years ago, where we are right now was a dream, was something that we wished for, but wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. And now we actually get to experience it. And mm -hmm. I believe that um, this is a very important part of um, being able to be more positive. And it's very helpful because it brings us uh, a lot of resilience in, in these times. Like we, when we have um, an emotional um, rock, basically, mm -hmm. like this, it's much easier for us to deal with uh, different challenges that we have. Right. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, what is something, sm a small spiritually aligned action step that someone can take to start to make that shift into gratitude, right? Let's make, make that shift into appreciation. Because I think sometimes it seems like you know, a big leap. How do I go from where I am right now? Let's say someone is feeling like they're at rock bottom. They're feeling super frustrated, super challenged, super stressed. How do they go from that to all of a sudden seeing the world through appreciative lenses, right? I mean, that might seem like a big leap. So what is, what are one or two or three small things that people can do starting today to start to make that shift into gratitude and appreciation? Yeah, so the first thing that I recommend and um, that I would love for us to do right now, if uh, if you're on board with it, yeah, is just um, um, just breathe and um, let's let's do it right now. So take a deep breath. And put your hand or hands on your chest. And just be in the present moment. And find one thing that you're grateful for. One thing that works in your life. One person that you're grateful for. You only have to find one. Why do you feel grateful for that particular thing or that particular person? It might be the place where you live that you're grateful for 
Why are you grateful for the fact that you have a place to live? It may be the fact that you're able to enjoy the comfort of home exactly as you want it. Everything is in the place and in the order that you love for it to be. Or if you think about the pet, why are you grateful for for your pet? It might be the fact that it makes you laugh or the fact that it makes you feel loved. Or maybe it reminds you of different things that are important for you in your life. And try to go as deep as possible with this. When you find a certain thing, just ask yourself, why do you appreciate that person, that thing, that being? And find a few things that you appreciate. And at the end of it, Say thank you with all of your heart. And open your eyes. And I think this is um, a great exercise that we can do anytime, like taking a deep breath and just focusing on the present moment and on one thing that we appreciate and going deep and um, really feeling it. Because when we... So one of the things that I, I think isn't perfect about uh, gratitude lists is the fact that people might uh, start doing them just with their mind like okay i'm grateful that um, i have a a house to live in um, that um, i don't know i have a life partner and um, i'm grateful for my pets but if you just pick one and really feel it, really experience it, it's a a whole different story. And um, you you get to see it in in a really different way, in a really special way and um, in a vibrant way. And I think that's that's very powerful. Yeah, that was that was so beautiful and so powerful. Thank you. Thank you for walking us through that. Um, I can definitely feel the energetic shift after doing that exercise. And I hope that our viewers and listeners had a chance to partake as well. Super beautiful. So thank you for for walking us through that. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, I I believe that we can shift uh, our habits. Like we tend to have some um, mental habits, some emotional habits, some social habits. And um, I believe in integrating gratitude in those. And for instance, one one social habit that uh, I hope most of us have is saying thank you. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that we as a society, I think, missed with this is 
educating people to actually feel grateful when they say thank you. And in that moment when you say thank you, to actually mean it and mm-hmm. to actually feel it and understand the fact that maybe someone um, uh, held the door for you, that was something pretty amazing. Yeah. Like in that exact moment, there was something, someone there that took a bit of their time to help you. They couldn't, they, they could have uh, um, chosen not to do it, but still mm-hmm. they, they did. And that's something amazing that, that we can appreciate. And we can appreciate the people that, uh, uh, that did those things for us. And uh, since we're saying thank you, hopefully quite a lot, um, we can use this habit that we already have and add on to that that emotional side that um that depth that actually brings us that actually enriches us and our experience because it um it helps us appreciate and realize the fact that we actually had a a, a beautiful experience of, even though it was something simple uh, in which we were helped one way or another mm-hmm. and um, it's one of the things that gratitude reminds us of is our interconnectedness the fact that um, we can't live without each other basically and um, the fact that we can help each other one way or another with small or big things is something something really amazing and um we we can we can transform some some simple things even even uh um i don't know getting uh, groceries at home uh, ordering them and really appreciating appreciating the fact that someone uh, took the time to take those exact uh, groceries that you had on your order form and put them um, in uh, boxes or in uh, um, in storage yeah and someone else uh, took them from the shop and to your place and they brought it to your front door that's something quite amazing and um, it it's something that uh, if we we would have needed to do do it, it would have taken us so much time compared. And yeah, I can talk about <laughs> this part quite quite a lot because I think even uh, supermarkets we we're, we're, uh, we got used to to supermarkets or markets in general. But if we think about it, we um, we have access to the work of so many people from all around the world. Like the fact that we have, um, I don't know, products from Japan, from China, from um, Europe, from all around the world. There were people that, uh, that worked so that we can enjoy those products. And I think it's something really amazing to think about. The fact that when we want to buy something, uh, whether we order it or we go and we just take it off the shelf, um, we can do that because there were people that worked on the whole process so that we can enjoy that and that we can get that experience. And I think it's something really simple that we got used to, but if we think about it, it's, it's something quite amazing. It really is. And I love, love, love that you brought up this example because actually right before you talk, started talking about groceries, that's exactly what I was just thinking of. I was waiting for you to finish. And I was going to just say that, you know, we can do this. We can express gratitude in any aspect of our lives, even day-to-day things such as in grocery shopping was the example that I was thinking of because I always think about that. I mean, I've done, obviously I've gone to the grocery store myself many times And lately I've been doing a delivery service, which has been amazing. And it is just incredible, regardless of which way you go, you know, to think about how many different hands have touched the process along the way, right? If you just think about what it took to get that product 
to the grocery store, right? And, you know, in, into your home, how many different steps, all the parts of the process, all the different hands that, you know, from the farmers who worked in the field to the people who packaged the stuff to the truck drivers who hauled it across the country to people behind the scenes, coordinating logistics, deliveries, like it really is quite a complex operation. And sometimes we don't even realize what goes into it, right? But that's where we can start to experience more depth and meaning and gratitude and appreciation in our lives is when we start to really go deep with the simple things such as, and again, in, in grocery shopping is something that I think we can all relate to just the, you know, getting food in our house. There's really so much that goes into that. And then that's when life becomes, starts to become a lot richer and have a lot more depth and a lot more meaning when we start to really dissect and explore everyday life experiences, such as grocery shopping. That's a great example. I'm super glad you brought that up. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, one other thing that um, we just passed by because we we don't know what's uh, what's behind it actually is technology and all of the softwares and the uh, uh, the hardware also that that we use like uh, i have the opportunity to to work with uh, people from um, it companies and i know how complicated it is for them like the, the work that they need to do for us to have a simple experience mm -hmm. like all of the things that are simple for us are complicated for other people and they made it simple for us and they they work a lot in in making sure that it's easy for us to use for instance and um i think that's that's something pretty amazing that we we don't usually see we don't uh it's not something that's uh very um i don't know easy to um perceive but it, it's it's something that's that's really beautiful and i think it's uh, these are just two examples but i think in in many other fields um there is a lot to to appreciate that uh the, the things that the simple things that we use are actually simple because someone uh did their best so that it it is simple for us and that we can enjoy something smooth and and uh, flowing. Yeah, that's such a profound observation. Thank you. So yeah, so we've got just a couple more minutes here. I loved, I've loved every minute of our conversation and I wish we can continue, um, but I wanna be respectful of your time. So before we close, I'd love to have you tell our listeners and viewers where they can get a hold of you directly if they would like to contact you. Yeah, sure. So. Um... The best way to go about it is um, my email address, uh, hello at georgianbenta.com. Also on Facebook or on Instagram, the Gratitude Podcast. Um, you can find them both there. And um, I'm pretty responsive on both um, platforms. Awesome. Thank you. And would you like to close with just um, some words of wisdom to our viewers and listeners? about gratitude or anything that you'd like to share? Yeah, sure. So wherever you are in the world or in, in your life, there's always something that you can start your gratitude habit with. There's always something that you can start appreciating. And... Um, I invite you to be open and to just try it because it enriches your experience and it's really not dependent on what's happening on the outside. It's really an inside journey that's very beautiful and that can um, can uh, give you many gifts in uh, the present moment and in the um, months, the days, months and years to come. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much. And I so appreciate you being on my show today. I truly am my grateful. Pleasure. You use some really powerful words, obviously gratitude. And you also use the word choose or choice. And I realize that time is a choice and it's just been such a gift for you to be here sharing your infinite knowledge and wisdom here with our viewers and listeners. So thank you very much for sharing some of your day with us. 
And to all of our viewers and listeners, I appreciate you more than words can ever say. Um, I believe the time is a choice, as I mentioned, and I'm grateful that you carved time out of your day to be here with us and listen to everything that Georgian has had to share with you today. I'm confident that he has shared some morsels of wisdom that will change your life in a very profound and powerful way. You know, you've shared some things that, um, that I can definitely take away and incorporate into my life. So this hour that we've spent together has truly been such a gift and I am super grateful. And um, again, I would love to have you all join us in our Facebook group, liveauthentically.today slash FB. Check out a copy of my book, Soar, and reach out to me at Pamela at liveauthenticallytoday.com. It's my email address and we can chat. All right, everyone. So I hope you have a wonderful day and we will connect soon. Bye.